Hey all you cheap jeepers, uh, today we're going to talk about the 4.8 Chevy LS motor. Now a lot of you might wonder, is the computer plug and play? Meaning if you just hook it up straight to the battery, will everything work like it's supposed to? No it will not. The reason why is because the computer has all these sensors in it that it does not need that is used to its stock car. When you hook it up to an older vehicle, you're going to need to get the computer what's called flashing, which means they get rid of all the sensors, all the relays inside the computer that you don't need. The only components you will need are the fuel injectors, the coil packs, the O2 sensors, the crankshaft position sensor, the electronic fuel pump, and the electronic fuel pump relay, and the throttle body. Will all the pulleys work? Uh, power steering will work. Um, AC compressor will work. Water pump will work, but the gooseneck is completely opposite from what it is on the original Wagoneer radiator. So what we're going to have to do is get either the one out of the same car of a 4.8 Chevy, which is either a Tahoe or a Yukon, or um, get a radiator that I have, which is out of a Grand Cherokee, and it's the exact match in the 4L80E two-wheel drive. Now I'm only going to do a 4L60 because they're easier to find. 4L80s are hard to find, so and my car is a grocery getter, so I'm not going to be doing heavy rock crawling. So a 4L60 will work out perfect. Now the transfer case uh, is a little different setup. Uh, the transmission has the tail shaft that runs the back, and the transfer case runs the front. Now on the Wagoneer, Chrysler had different ideas: a Turbo 400 with a Borg Warner transfer case. The Borg Warner transfer case has both yokes running off of the chain of the transfer case. Now what you're going to need is the drive shaft goes to the pumpkin and the pumpkin on the axle is off to the right. Now you could make it work but it will wear out your U-joints quicker because it will be at an angle. And, and the new 4L60E transmission has a tail shaft so you're going to, it's about, about this long so you're going to have to cut at least a foot off of your original drive shaft. But I recommend you get a new drive shaft, new axle all together. Uh, as far as the front axle goes, it will not work at all because the front axle Dana 44 on a Jeep Wagoneer is passenger side drop and the one on the um, 4L60E is driver side drop. So you're going to have to get a new axle for that for the front, definitely. Now I recommend you get the axles out of the same car the 4A came out of. They're better built and they're direct bolts up. The only problem is with the Wagoneer, the front are leaf springs and on the uh, Yukon and Silverado, the front axle is coil springs. So what we're going to need is a four link, a track bar, um, new linkage and coil springs. And you're going to have to make buckets for the coil springs as well. So when you hook up your front drive shaft, you're going to need to, if you have the stock pipe, which you're going to get might have to get rid of anyway, but if you find a way to keep it, you're going to have to get rid of the Y pipe in order to have your drive shaft to the front work. Otherwise, it'll hit the exhaust when the when it bounces up and down, and it'll cause wear and tear, and it'll damage your exhaust and your drive shaft. So, since I have straight dual pipes, it won't affect me as much. Let's talk about torque specs of the heads of the 4.8 torque specs you're going to want to start with 15 foot pounds go in a crisscross pattern I believe you start with the middle and then you work your way out and then back and then this way and you go in a crisscross pattern now I'll show you that in a different video as far as the torque specs go you're going to need to start at 22 foot pounds and in your second round you're going to want to go 33 foot pounds and then your last round you're going to want to go 44 foot pounds. Some guys go a little higher, that's okay. Do what your recommendation is, but I looked it up on the forum and those were the recommended torque specs of the 4.8 Chevy LS V8 motor. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, I'll be showing you guys the LS swap here shortly. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. I'm Tyler Schmidt, this is Cheap G Channel, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.